shouldn't be so uh, shouldn't be such a long daf today. Uh, we'll just we're up to daf Kufchaf Ahmed Bays in Yavamas and about like ten lines from the bottom. Vachaya Oichelas. So the, what we're discussing over here and uh, tomorrow's the Siem Bezos Hashem. Uh, what we're discussing over here, the topic is that uh, to say uh, a witness, a witness to say that a husband died, you really have to see the actual death. You have to see the dead body. You have to recognize it right away. It's just a chumrah of chazal. You know, sometimes you can assume that the person died. You saw the guy walking into the concentrate into the gas chamber, Leolenu. So you, you could assume he died, but Chazal with the with put an extra chumras on Isr Ashis Ish that unless the witness saw the actual dead body dead and recognized it, so then they wouldn't permit you to get married. L'chatchila. So then one of the examples that the Mishnah gave is Vahachaya Oichala. You saw a wild animal eating up a human being. So then you can assume um, that that you unless you saw the guy dead. Then you assume the guy is still alive. And uh, so if you saw the uh, wild animal eating a person and then you didn't see the actual dead body. So then you're not permitted to marry. The woman is not permitted to marry. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. Rabbi Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel, Loi Shanu, this was not taught. Ela mi you saw the wild animal eating up the person in a spot, in a spot where his life is not going to go out. Let's say you saw him eating his fingers or something like that. So then if you didn't see the actual guy die, you can't assume that he died. But if you just saw, if you saw from the place where the actual, the person actually died, then Me'idin, you're allowed to say testimony that he actually is dead. Okay. So, so that's the that's what we're discussing over here. So if you saw the wild animal eating the human person and by his neck, let's say, then even if you didn't see him die, you can tell you could go you could go tell his wife, I saw your husband dead, even though you didn't see him actually die. But if you saw the wild animal just eating some part of his body, then uh, we're not we don't allow the woman to get married. Hello, everyone. Hi, Mayor. We're up to Kof Chof Ahmed Beis in the bottom over here. We're talking about uh, people saying testimony that somebody actually died to allow his wife to marry. So the Gemara says, If you saw a guy who got his neck, uh, uh, you know, got his neck knifed by, they, they, they slaughtered his, his windpipe and his food pipe or even most of those pipe, Ubarach, then he ran away. So you didn't see the dead body. You know he got knifed, and they actually severed his, his two main arteries. So then, Me'idin, you can say testimony that the guy for sure died, even if you never saw the body again. So the Gemara says, Ain't he? That's not so. For Amr, Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda said him, name or small, Shachat boy shnaim oi roiv shnaim, if they slaughtered somebody's two pipes, windpipe, a food pipe, or most of them. And while he's still bleeding there, Viramas Vama, he made like signs with his hands and said, Kiss will get Lishti, write a, a get for my wife and give it to her in my name. Maybe he doesn't want her to fall to Yibim. That's why he's saying, just write this get. You should write the get and give it to her. So we see that even though a person got uh, slaughtered in his throat, He's still considered alive, right? And therefore, therefore he can he can because if he's dead, he can't tell somebody to write a get. And therefore, if we consider him alive, so how can you say testimony that he's if you saw something like that, his wife could remarry? Answers the Gemara: Simple, yes, chayho. We know he's alive, and he'll live maybe uh, an hour, but besides Lomas, he's going to die very quickly. So therefore. He can actually, at the moment that he's still around, he can still uh, hint to somebody to write a get for his wife, but we can assume that he's going to die very shortly th- thereafter. So, so you're telling me that 
he doesn't, he can, he dies almost immediately, right? You're trying to tell me that he dies almost immediately. Elmiata, if what you're saying is true, Yehei Goyla al Yodai, you should be able to be exiled because of that. If someone accidentally did this to somebody, let's say somebody accidentally sliced somebody's two pipes uh, by the throat, he should, he, and it's an accident. The, the, the Gemara brings a brisa that you don't go to Gullus. Alamatanya, why was it taught? Shachat Shnaim Rav Shnaim. If someone did this to somebody else by accident, he cut his two windpipe and food pipe. Hareze Enigoyli doesn't go to, 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 he doesn't go to exile to those Ari Mikla because he didn't die right away. In order to go to Ari Mikla, you have to die uh, almost immediately. Uh, and that's part of the Pasuk, the Yomus, you have to go die right, right away. And here you're saying that he, uh, if you're saying that he does die right away, so therefore then he should go to Ari Mikla. He should be sent to, to exile, the person that did it by accident. And so, so that's the question. Now I want to point out to you, if someone did this to somebody, he knifed him, even if the, on purpose, even if the guy died a week later, you would still, he's Chayev Misa, he, he's a Ritzeach. But there's a special limitation when somebody does something by accident, in order to you to go to the Are Mikla, the cities of refuge, it has to be that you that he died immediately. But if there's a space of time that he didn't die, then you won't go to Are Mikla. So the Gemara's point over here is that if you say that he is considered dead, by Shachet, by Shnayim, then why doesn't he, somebody who did this by accident will be forced to go to Ari Miklet? And says the Gemara, there's another reason why he doesn't go to Ari Miklet. Ha'itma Allah, it was taught. Omar of Haishaya, the reason why if you did it by accident, you don't go to the cities of refuge is Haishin and Shema, Aruach Bilbalatu. We're afraid that the reason why the guy died was not only because of the knife wound, but because of the air coming into his body, and because of that, you are a potter. Because the Torah says that only if you killed him and he died 100% because of what you did by accident, then you go to, then you go to the cities of refuge. But if it wasn't, if you can't clearly say that you were the only cause, then you wouldn't go to the cities of refuge. And Inami, we can assume uh, another Torah is Shema Ihu. We go to the top of Kuf Chafalev, Kerev Misasai. We say that maybe he himself, uh, because he moved around, he brought upon his death to happen a little faster. Therefore, he doesn't go to Gullus only if we know for a fact that he was the only cause, the, the, the perpetrator was the only cause of his death. My Benai, what would be a practical difference between the two opinions? The shach, the answer is the shach, the bebeisa, the sheisha, u parkes. Let's say that he 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 shechted him in a house that was hermetically sealed, so it wasn't the the wind that brought him down, but nevertheless, u parkes he jumped around. So according to the man the yama that says ruach bil balatu, you would go to Gullus because here the the wind didn't get him. It was a hermetically sealed room. And therefore, uh, it was your, it was specifically the knife wound that caused his death. But if he jumped around, then we can say that the, the fact that he jumped around, that's what caused him to die. He would not go to Gullahs. Inami, another practical difference between the two. The Shachte Babara, if you shechted him in the midbar, the loy perkas, and he didn't go and he didn't jump around. So if he shechted him in the midbar, what brought upon his death? Obviously the wound, the knife wound, but it's also the air, the air quality of being out there in the desert or outside. But he didn't jump around, so he didn't he, he didn't he didn't bring upon his death by moving moving and jerking, and therefore in that case again it would be a machlekes. Would you go to Gullus or would you not go with Gullus? Next Gemara, we learned in the Mishnah a very important point that if you want to say witness. The Mishnah Tanakhama says that the only way you can identify, you know, the pathologist can identify the person, it has to be within three days that the person died. Uh, not, a regular person. 
that you within three days that a person died, then anybody could say testimony that he was the person that died. But if it's after three days, the people, the person's figure changes. He, you know, his face blows up or he becomes deformed. So then we don't trust the witness anymore. If it was after three days of death, that's when the witness saw the dead body, then we don't rely on him to permit his wife to get married. Comes along Rabbi Yehuda and he says, you can't give the three day number. Some people, it doesn't matter. Some It depends on the place, depends on the time, depends on the person. So the three-day number is, is, is not definitive. So we want to understand what Rabbi Yehuda meant to say. Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava said that the three-day timeline is not definitive. Is he coming to make it lighter? He's saying to say that sometimes, even after five days, seven days, you can still recognize the dead body as that person. And that's what Rabbi Huda ben Bava is trying to say. Oi, l'chum repalig. Or maybe he's coming to be more stricter and says, no, three days, less than three days. Because some people decompose or change the figure, change how they look within a day after they die. Tashima, come in here. Dahu Gavra, there was this person, the Tava Bakarmi. He, he drowned in, the, in this place called Karmi. And maybe there was a body of water in Karmi. Vasku, they brought the body, a Behedya, uh, to this place called Behedya, Labasa Tlosinyam. It was three days after he drowned. Okay, so now they have this body. But Ansava, Rabdimi Menadar Ludvese, they recognized him, and Rabdimi from Nehardoi gave permission that his wife could remarry. So we see, by the way, that even after three days, you can say definitively that this is this person's body, that this is this person. Again, I, I believe that the Gemara is discussing where they didn't have pathology and they didn't have uh, ways to identify. It was just you look at the face. And, and uh, Rav Dini said, even if it's after three days, you can still say that this is the person. You can uh, assume that it is the person that died, that drowned, and you can permit his wife to get married. Vesu, and then another case. There was a person that drowned in the Euphrates River, right? And they brought him the body, they brought to this place called the, the Bridge of the Shapstana. Okay, and they and they had a witness who recognized the person. And Rabrava gave permission for the wife to get remarried on the testimony of the people of his friends. And this was after five days after they pulled him out of the body of water. So what do you see from there? He amrit, if you say, Bishlama Lakula Palig, that Rehuda ben, Rabbi Huda is trying to, Rabbi Huda ben Baba is trying to make e easier and saying that three days is not a definitive number. You can even have five days or longer. So Inu, these both Amaroyim that permit the women to get married, who the Ovid Rabbi Huda ben Baba? They followed the opinion of Yehuda ben Baba. Ella, but I amret lechumre palik. But if you want to say Rabbi Huda ben Baba was more stricter than the Tanakama, the Tanakama gave you three days to identify a body. Rabbi Huda ben Baba says no, it's less than three days. So then, where did these Amaroyim come up with a five-day number? Inu the Ovid command. Who did they paskin like? Who did they? Who did they? Whose opinion did they follow? None of the Tanaim and the Mishnah. Answers the Gemara, no. They really paskined according to the Chachamim that th the th number is three days. Three days after a person died, that's the limit of how much you can, of a person can identify him. But if a person drowned in water, then you the, the time gets extended. Sha'an and Maya did some say, because when somebody drowns in water, his body uh, <coughs> remains, doesn't blow up. It doesn't blow up uh, as much. The uh, tzamtze, he doesn't blow up, and therefore it shrinks. It's it's held together. So the Gemara says, "Va'amrit." But didn't you tell me previously, Maya Marzu Maka, uh, water can aggravate and cause a blotation of a wound? And says the Gemara, "Yes, Hani Maka. If there's a wound, then if it, if it was in water, then the water will aggravate it and cause the wound to inflate." And become unrecognizable as a simon. If it's a perfect body without any wounds, actually, mitzvah summits, the body can be recognized. 
And therefore, uh, therefore, um, uh, uh, even if it's long after that, you can still recognize the body. And says the Gemara, Ahani mili dichi aske achazi b'shaitid. When you brought him up from the from you found the body, you saw him right away. Avol ishti even after you bringing him up from water, if it, if you keep it out for a longer period of time, then mitvach tafech will blow up and become unrecognizable. So fascinating Gemara that discusses uh, uh, people that that drown and how lo- how much time do you have to recognize who they are. Look, look at the Gemara, the Gemara talks about, uh, the Mishnah discusses, this is a famous Mishnah. A guy, nof, there's two types of body of the water. There's one type of body of water, like a, like a pool. Like a, let's say, imagine a swimming pool, but not a swimming pool, a black body of water, which you can see the ends of it. You can see the ends of the whole body of water with your eyes. You can see all four, like a, like a swimming pool. But imagine a swimming pool with black water 100 feet deep. So comes the Mishnah and says, if a person fell into water, and, and the body fell into the water, a guy fell into water, let's say it's a, it's a body of water, that you can see the 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 rim around it, it has visible ends around it, like say a, a swimming pool, but not a swimming pool, of, of you, because of a swimming pool, you can see the body in the bottom of the pool. But let's say a black you know, hole in the ground and it's deep, very, very deep, and the water is dark and you can't see anything, you'll never find the body. So if the man fell into that water, or he fell into, he fell off a cruise ship, okay? So you fell off a cruise ship, your wife will remain awesome. Why? You, what, what are the chances of a, a, a person falling off a cruise ship is going to survive that? The answer is, I, as I explained, Chazal were very strict about Aishas Ish, that as long as you don't find the body, you could assume that the, maybe the man somehow survived somewhere. And therefore, if they, if they survive, uh, you don't. You probably didn't know about it. How they how they save themselves. So therefore, the 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 woman remains usher. And even if it's a body of water, which is like a, the size of a swimming pool, and if he would have emerged, you would have seen his head pop out of the water. And if even if you didn't see him, we also assume he survived. Now, how could a person survive in a in a, a swimming pool? Let's say the size, you know, the 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 shape of a swimming pool, and he did, his, you didn't see his head pop up, so we can assume Rabbi, Rabbi, we can assume that the guy lived underwater for a couple of days. Ami Rab Meir, and this is the opinion of Rab Meir, which is the Tanakama. Masa be'echad, I'll prove it to you. There was a story with one person, Shenafal Abar Hagado. He fell into a big pit, and and obviously there was a body of water in that pit. And, he, and then he popped out after three days. So we see that a person can live underwater for three days. I don't know what the record is, but I think David Blaine did it for 17 minutes. But uh, the Mishnah says that it's possible to have it for three days. So that, the, the tonic, most people, the, the Chachamim who disagree with Rameir, said that was a nace. A person can't live underwater for three days. For three, um, for three days, at most, you need to wait three hours. If the guy, if his head didn't pop out of the water for three hours, you assume he died. Amar Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yosi disagrees. Masa Besuma, it was this blind person, Shiarad Litbul Bamara. He went to take a um, toivel himself in a in a cave. Right, there was a body of water in a cave. Yarad Moishchay Achrav and his uh, chaperone followed after him, and they didn't. They just came. They went under the water. Of the in the cave water, and they didn't pop out. The show Kadesha takes an option. So the people who were waiting for them waited at least, uh, let's say, three hours. And still, they, they, for sure, they would have died by not popping out of the water. They didn't uh, see them emerge. The CUS Nishasayam, they gave permission for their wives to remarry. We assume they died. The blind person with a chaperone. Then the Mishnah says, but. What we just learned, so that's by that you can see the end, the visible ends of the water. 
Shuv Masa Asia Be'echa, there was a story in Asia. Now, the, the, they, want, they sent somebody scuba diving. The way they sent them to the scuba diving or snorkeling, they tied a, a rope around his foot and they, they threw him into the water. And then, you know, he stays underwater, takes a look around, and then they bring him back up. So Be'echa, there's this one person, Shashashlu Layam. They they wrapped this, they wrapped a rope around his foot and they put him into the sea and then they brought him back up. But guess what? Uh also biodam el ragalad. They only were able to bring back up his foot. So apparently, either he was bitten by a fish or something like that, and only his foot survived. And this was in the middle of the ocean, okay? Amru Chacham, Chacham said, Min Haakuba Ulamala, if he was bitten, if you can see the foot was from the knee and above. So you have his foot plus above the knee. Then you assume that even if he was bitten, he wouldn't have survived. He not say he could get married. Min ha'kuba ulamata. But if he was bitten, only you're pulling up a little part of the foot. But from it's from the knee and below. Loi say you cannot permit his wife to be remarried. Why? Because you assume the guy swam away and he was able to survive that. So we would not give permission for his wife to remarry. Tanraban, the rabbi is taught, if a person fell into a body of water, again, Ramey is the strictest. He says, no matter what, a person, if you don't find the body, okay, and the person fell into water, whether it's a small body of water, where you can see all the visible ends of the water, or it's a, out there an open lake, the Ishto Yasura, the, the wife will forever remain Asr, the Vera Mayor, because there's a minute possibility that he survived, and we don't want to matter on HSS to get married. The Chacham says it depends. Mayim Shiesh Lem Soiv, if it's if it's a, a water where you can see the rim around the water, all the borders of it. So it's a small body of water, no matter how deep it is. The wife will be mutter because if he didn't emerge, if he would have emerged, you would have seen him. But if it's a wide, it's a wide open body of water, his wife will be Asr. What's called a small body of water that the wife would be permitted? If you're standing outside the body of water, and you can see all four borders of this body of water, that's uh, uh, that's that's called a small body of water. And if a guy dropped into that water and never emerged, uh, so you can assume that he died and his wife is permitted to get married. But if it's a wide open Indian Ocean and he fell out of an airplane, we, we can assume that he's still alive and we not permit his wife to get married. Ahu Gavra, there was this person, the Tava Ba'agma de Samke, in this pool, of, of in some k some k is the name of a place. Ansiva Rav Sheila Now this was an open lake. Okay, so Rab, so it's called a Mayim She'ein Lehem Soif. Right, it has no end. It's like you can't see the borders, and yet Rav Sheila gave permission to his wife to remarry. Wait a second. What it's Omalei Rav Lishmuel Rav was so when he heard the story of Rav Sheila's psak. He said, Ta nishamte. let's put this Rav Shela in excommunication. He's paskining wrong. Uh, he's allowing this woman to get married. His, 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 her husband dropped into a water, she'ein lehem saif. Amalei, so Shmuel said to him, wait a second, hold your horses. Nishlech lebereisha, let's send him a questions on his psak before we put him right away in the chair. Shochulei, they sent to Rav Shela. Ma'im she'ein lehem saif, if it's a open body of water. Would you say that the wife would be usher or permitted? She said, the wife would always remain awesome. Okay, so now he agrees to that. But I'm getting the Samke, this this pool, um, this lake of Samke. What would you think of that? Is that considered Mayim that has an end, a border, or not? It's a water that has no end. Oh boy. So now, so then if you hold it, it's a maim shem lem soif. And you hold and maim shem lem soif, the ishta is asura. 
Why did you permit this woman to get married? She, her husband fell into this open body of lake water and, 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 and she should not be permitted to get married. And says the Gemara, so Rav Shele explained himself, I made a mis- big mistake. I thought that lake, the water stays put, right? It doesn't move. So So basically, if the guy fell into a certain spot in that lake and his, he didn't emerge, so you, you can't assume that he, 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 he fell someplace else. The water doesn't move. So that's considered as if he fell into water that has boundaries to it. And therefore, if you didn't see his head emerge, you can permit his wife to be married. But now I realize I made a mistake because Kevin the Ikigali, sometimes waves could come. In other words, sometimes a wind can blow and wave can go, uh, can push him and you didn't, you missed it. I, might have, I would say now that the waves carried him off. And therefore, I made a mistake in Psak of allowing this woman to get married. Now, I want to point out to you, when the woman gets married by mistake like this, as long as her husband didn't show up, we allow her to remain married. This is only a chumrah of Chazal that said you shouldn't get married, but if you did get married, it's all permitted. Kare Shmuel alay the Rav. Shmuel said to Rav, look, you were safe for not putting him in excommunication. He, admit, he, made, he admitted he made a mistake. The tzaddik does not uh, mess up. And you're a righteous person, Rav, and therefore you didn't mess up by putting the wrong person in excommunication. Kari Rav Alei to Shmuel. Rav said to Shmuel, I'm not, uh, I don't take the credit over here. It's the fact is I asked you advice. Oshua Berov Yaitz. You get salvation if you take a lot of advice. And I took uh, I took advice from you, and that saved me from putting the wrong person in Cheir. Tanya, we learned in a bright. So Omar Rebbe Rebbe said, Maisa Bishnei Bnei Adam, there were two persons, Bechamrim, Choymrim, Biyarden. Benichnas Echem Ahem Lebechila Shal Dogem. There were two people putting nets in the Jordan River, and one of them went into a cave of fish. Apparently on the side of the wall of the Jordan, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a cave there carved out by fish where you could swim there, but somehow you can stick your, they don't, it doesn't, it, it is part of it that's below the water and part of it is above the water. Vishaka Chama and the, the sunset, and the guy didn't come out of the cave. And the guy, his friend waited three hours, didn't see his, uh, didn't see the person emerge. They came and told his house, he's, he's, he didn't come out of the cave, he must be dead. The next day, the sun rose, and he recognized the way out of this cave. And he came home, he showed up, and, there's, and then they're eulogizing him. Uh, they're making a big hespit. Omar, he said, how powerful are the words of the Chachamim. Sha'amru, they said, Maim Shesh Lam Soif Ishtim Uteresh, Sha'im Lehem Soif Ishtim Asura. If you're if you're in a Mayim that does not have a borders around it, like the Jordan River, right? Ishtoy Asura, his wife always remains awesome because there's a possibility that he could survive. And here the guy fell into a crevice in the Jordan River, and you thought he was dead, and, and it turns out he, he emerged safe. So the Gemara says, Why do we say that a person who fell into a body of water that has borders, we don't assume that he survived somehow in a cave inside the side of the waters? And says the Gemara, If you have a small body of water, then all you're dealing in that body of water is small fish, and they don't dig uh, caves or crevices on the side of the wall where, where which would allow a person to survive there. Omar Ravashi, Ravashi said, Hade Amri, that that the Chazal told us, Mayim Shehein Lehem Soif Ishtesur, if a guy falls into the Indian Ocean, his wife will always remain also because maybe he survived. Hani Mili B'inish Alba, that's by a person. A regular guy, if you don't hear from him, maybe he survived. Aval Tzurva Merabonin, if he was a great rabbi, loy. Why? Because Eid Salik, if he survived, call it Isli, the, the news would travel that he survived. things on the other side of the world. 
Velahi, but it's not so. Loishna inish the alma, veloishna suver merabanan, doesn't matter who it is, the avid and the chatchila loy. Only be the avid, we allow the woman to get married. The chatchila loy, we don't allow the woman to get married. Again, if his husband fell in somewhere in the ocean, no matter who he is, even, even if, if it's a suver merabanan, we don't allow the wife to get married. Le chatchila. Tanya, we learned in a brisa. Omar Abigail. I was once on a boat. And the other, I saw in the ocean, another boat that broke apart and, and, and capsized. I was so upset and distraught over seeing that sight because I knew on the other boat, there was a great Talmud Chacham on that other boat. Umani, or who is that other person? Rabbi Akiva. Fine. So Rabbi Gamaliel went home, Okshalisi by Abasha. When I when I came on dry land, I I the don lefanei b'halacha. I I was giving a shear, and all of a sudden, the person Rabbi Akiva, who was on the other boat, that capsized, showed up and started questioning me in halacha. Amar So I said to him, Bani, mi halacha, How did you survive? How did you amali? So he said, Daf shel svina nizdamali. A, a, a part, a plank of the ship, I happened to uh, happen to me. In other words, I held on to a plank of the ship. The whole gal, the gal, and every wave, Shabbat, on the Nati Larisha, I bent my head and somehow I made it to the seashore. The Khan Amr Chacham, Chacham says this that you should learn from here in Yavoy Rishayim Al Adam, if evil people start up with you, uh, first of all, I don't know where they see it here, but if they see, if evil people start, you know, uh, t- taunting you, don't fight them back. The best thing is always to bend and let let things, let the bullets fly over your head. And the same idea that Rabbi Kiva, with every wave that was pushing him away, he, he bent into the wave and then was able to move forward towards the, the shore. Omarti, so Rabbi Gamliel said, I said, Look how powerful the words of the Chachamim. They gave the power for a possibility of a person to capsize on a great ship and survive uh, by miraculously by being out there in the ocean just on a plank of wood. If a person falls in, falls in an open body of water, his wife is also because we assume that maybe he survived. And that's how we see Rabbi Akiva survived. Tanya, we learned in Abraham. So Amr Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva said, I was on a boat. And I saw another boat, another big ship that also capsized. That was, you know, that was, it looks like it was in trouble in the sea. And it looks like it was, it broke apart. And I was so distraught, Rabbi Kiva says, under the Talmud Chacham. A similar story, Rabbi Kiva saying that I saw somebody else capsize. Well, Mani Rab Meir. And that other person that was on the other boat that capsized was Rab Kapotkia. When I came to the, the town of the uh, country of Kapotkia, this Rab Meir showed up while Rabbi Akiva was giving a shear. So I said to Rab Meir, Beni Miha Elcha. Rabbi Kiva said to Rameya, how did you survive? Amali, he said to me, Gal One wave dragged me, you know, I surfed the waves, and one, one wave carried me to the next wave, to the next wave. Actually, I was barfed onto the, onto the dry land. Amarti, so Rabbi Kiva said, How powerful are the words of Chachamim. Shama, Maim Shem, Yeshem Sof, Ishti Buteris, Maim Shem, Yeshem Ishti Asura. Tanarabana, another two minutes and we'll stop. Tanarabana, not for the goyv arayas, a person fell into a den of lions. Doesn't matter, it's a big cage of lions. Amy Eden Olaf. You don't say, if you don't see the dead body, then you can't say testimony that he died. Perhaps the lions were not hungry. If it's a small you know, ditch where there's snakes or scorpions there, the Eden Olaf, we can assume that the person died. This is all if you don't see the body, obviously. If you see him fall into a small pit of where snakes and scorpions are there, 
not necessarily he died. You don't say testimony that he died. Why? We go to Kofchav Chabez and Mbez. Maybe he's a sorcerer. Maybe he knows how to, you know, say some incantations that the snakes and scorpions don't bother him. But Tanakama disagreed because nothing is going to help because as soon as you pressure down on and smash down onto the snakes or the scorpions, they for sure, uh, uh, they show up, uh, bit him. And that's why it's impossible that he survived. Tanur Abonam, the rabbi is taught. Uh, if a person fell into a big furnace, you say that he died. But if he fell into a big cauldron of that was full of wine or oil, so when he fell into the oil and the wine, the oil and the wine splashed out of the pot, right? Seven less, you say that he died. If he fell into a pot of oil and the oil splashed out of the pot, he for sure died. Because that makes the pot even hotter because the oil splashing out onto the fire causes the fire to inflame more. But but if he fell into a pot of wine that was cooking, so then the wine popped out, of, uh, splashed out of the pot and probably uh, almost extinguished for a little bit the fire of the wine. And, and therefore, he was able to, you know, somehow make it out of there. Ain't my Eden love. You don't say testimony that he died, but Neishu Mechaba, because he probably extinguished the fire. Amru Lai, so they said, Chacham disagreed with Rabbi Acha. It extinguished it, you're right, for a little bit, but then it reignites even stronger, so there's no way that he can survive. One more minute, and then we'll stop. Rameir says that a person can survive underwater for three days. And therefore, therefore, uh, no one's if you even if you see a person in a small body of water drop in and 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 you didn't you stood there for a day, it doesn't matter. Maybe the guy survived three days underwater and he brought a story to prove himself. He brought a story that it happened. Ripley's believe it or not. So Tanya, Amr Lai Rameh, they told Rameh, that's not a proof. A Maskir Maisinis. That story was a ness. It was a definitely miracle. So the Gemara says, My Maisinis. And what makes it more of a miracle? How did the guy survive for not eating and drinking? If, if he was underwater for three days, he didn't eat or drink. So that's not true. A person could survive without eating or drinking for three days. We see that in Megillus Esther. That was part of the plan. Fast for me for three days straight. He probably didn't sleep underwater. If a person makes a, sw- a swears, I'm not sleeping for three days, we give him malchus and we put him to sleep right away because that's a shvur shav. A person cannot survive without sleep for three days. So Rab Meir, my time, Rab Meir, L'chaira, the guy, it's a whole my, the story that Ramea brought was a magical story of a, of a miracle because obviously the guy didn't sleep for three days underwater. So how can you prove from that story? Amar Rav Kahana, no. Kefen agave kefen hava. According to Ramea, there was like arches. There was ways to hold on that he was holding on to some protrusions from this body of water. And therefore, that's how he slept. Rabbanon, the she- Rabbanon learned the Sheshahava. They were made of smooth stone, so it was impossible to him to hold on without slipping off. And therefore, how could he have slept for three days? It's impossible that he wouldn't be able to just take a grasp and sleep a little bit. So according to Rameya, this story was not an ace. It was a miracle. It sh- shows the, that human endurance can happen and a person can be underwater for more than three days. According to Chachamim, it's 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 it can't be. It's a whole story was a miracle story because it's part of the miracle was that the person didn't sleep for three days, and therefore you can't bring a proof for that story that a person can survive underwater for three days, and that's why the Chachamim hold Maim Shiesh Lehem Soif Ishtei Okay, for here we'll stop.